Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the MOOC in Tractomics course. The combination of proteomic technologies, especially the protein microarrays, have potential to be applied for wide variety of biological applications. The application of cell-free based protein microarrays have seen rampant increase because of ease of synthesizing the proteins by using cell-free expression based system as compared to the cell based traditional way of protein purification and then printing on the array surface. We discussed this aspect in our previous lecture when we talked about use of cell free expression system for biomarker discovery. Today we will continue our discussion on applications of cell free expression system and other biological goals they help us to achieve using few case studies. Finally, we will also touch upon the challenges of analyzing the microarray data regardless of which experiments you perform and what biological questions you may want to address. However, the data analysis becomes very crucial and challenging in microarray experiments. The first case study for today is detection of potential immunogenic proteins of plasmodium falciparum, the study performed by Dulan et al. in 2008. Dulan et al. used E. coli based cell free in vitro transcription and translation system to produce 250 plasmodium falciparum generated by the polymerase chain reaction and recombinational cloning procedures. After synthesizing the proteins from these 250 open reading frames, authors profiled antibodies that developed after natural or experimental infection or after the vaccination with the attenuated organism. These are exposed to the plasmodium falciparum either naturally or experimentally and were screened by using protein microarrays. In this study, they identified 72 highly reactive plasmodium falciparum antigens. The proteins expressed specifically in pre erythrocytic stage of plasmodium which was CSP as well as some liver stage specific antigens such as LSA1. They also identified successfully several proteins by applying cell free expression based protein microarrays. Let us now discuss this experiment by looking at this animation. Let us now discuss the immunological studies in this animation. The use of cell free expression based protein microarrays for detection of potential immunogenic proteins of Plasmodium falciparum was studied by Doolan et al. 2008. In this study, authors carried out cell free expression of PCR amplified vectors using an Escherichia coli in vitro transcription and translation system. They expressed 250 putative proteins that were printed directly onto the microscopic array slides without any need for protein purification. These arrays were probed with serum samples from patients who had been naturally exposed to plasmodium falciparum and who were experimentally exposed by means of radiation attenuated plasmodium falciparum. Authors successfully identified 72 
highly immunoreactive protein antigens as well as 56 previously uncharacterized antigens that were zero dominant. The study has shown some of the newly identified targets can serve as potential vaccine targets. Let us now talk about the next case study identification of immunogens of Q fever causing coxilla burnity study performed by Beer et al 2008. Q fever is widely spread zoonotic disease caused by coxilla species. So, identification of immunogens of Q fever causing this disease were identified by using protein microarray. In this study authors used coxilla burnity protein microarrays to identify immunodominant antigens. Almost 2000 open reading frame ORFs were generated by using the cell free expression based approach E. coli in vitro transcription translation system and then employed this protein microarray platform for identifying the immunodominant antigens. Some of the steps involved in this experiment will be discussed in following animation. Case study 4 identification of immunogens of Q fever caused by Coxella burnetti study by Bear et al 2008. Bear et al carried out in vitro transcription and translation of 1988 open reading frame of C burnetti by using E. coli based cell free systems. 75 percent of the open reading frames were successfully generated as full length proteins by using cell free expression system and then spotted onto the nitrocellulose arrays. These cell free expression based microarrays were probed with sera from the patients who had been vaccinated as well as acute Q fever patients. Fifty proteins were identified that were found to react strongly with the immune serum. From the previous lecture and this lecture, you got a glimpse of application of protein microarrays for biomarker discovery and several immunological studies. It is time now to look another widely used application which is protein protein interaction by using cell free expression based protein microarrays. In this part of lecture, I will mainly focus on nucleic acid programmable protein array or NAPA and how they have been applied to study protein protein interactions. In this slide, as you can see, there is a small test array which we have used to teach a proteomics course in Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory in New York. The students made the array themselves and as you can see the array layout there are only 5 handful genes were printed in duplicate on the chip along with vector control, master mix and water. Now, if we want to study the June and FOSS protein interaction and you can use FOSS as a query protein, it will bind to June protein spot and therefore, two spots of June will light up as you can see in the slide. So, in all the six blocks, there are duplicate of June proteins which are interacting with FOS protein and so June FOS protein interactions can be established by using the protein microarray system. The previous array which we talked was a small test array, but if you really want to perform the proteome wide screen to test protein protein interaction, so you have to use high density protein arrays. Now, in this slide, I am showing you a high density protein arrays to test the same protein protein interaction of June and FOSS protein pairs. In this study, students used FOSS as a query protein and then identified June printed four times on the chip as a target. June FOSS was used as a model system to demonstrate how protein protein interactions can be studied 
by using self free expression based NAPA microarray system. Let us look at some more case studies where protein microarrays have been used for studying the protein interactions. The next case study is performed by Ramachandran et al. 2004 to identify novel protein protein interactions using NAPA microarrays. Authors reported generation of self assembling microarrays, which was one of the novel technology reported in science in 2004. In this study, Ramachandran et al. used a pairwise interaction among 29 human DNA replication initiating proteins, which recapitulated the regulation of CDT1 binding to the selected replication proteins and mapped its geminin binding domain by using NAPA approach. Let me describe some of the steps involved in this experiment by showing you this animation. Protein interaction studies Case study 5 identification of novel protein protein interactions using nucleic acid programmable protein microarrays. Study by Ramachandran et al. 2004. Ramachandran et al. tested the use of NAPA microarrays by immobilizing 29 sequence verified human genes involved in the replication initiation on the array surface. and then expressing them in replicate with rabbit reticulocyte lysate. The expressed proteins bound to the anti-GST antibodies which are the capture antibodies present on the array surface. Authors made use of each of these express proteins to probe another duplicate array of the same 29 proteins, thereby generating a 29 by 29 protein interaction matrix. 110 interactions were detected between proteins of the replication initiation complex, of which 63 were previously undetected. Let us now discuss the next case study, high density NAPA array approach for studying well characterized gene pairs, a study by Ramachandran et al. 2008. The previous study which we discussed was more proof of concept where handful proteins were taken to study the protein protein interactions. Whereas this time authors used high density arrays with thousands of protein features were printed. In this study authors used high density NAPA approach to study the binary interactions between several well characterized interacting protein pairs such as June and FOS, P53 and MDM2. Now selective binding to these interactions were identified by using specific antibodies. In protein interaction studies, it becomes very tedious to test our protein interactions in both directions. For example, if one is testing the June and FOS interaction, it should work in either way, June as a query or FOS as a query protein. If FOS is printed on the array, June should be able to bind if used as query protein or similarly, if June is printed on the array, then FOS protein can be used as query molecule to test the protein interactions. Many times these interactions become unidirectional. It becomes very tedious to show that interaction is working in either of these directions. But in this study authors showed that protein interaction of June FOS protein pair can be shown in both the directions. In addition to showing that protein expression and protein interaction works, it was also interesting to perform the co-expression where authors showed that even the query protein need not to purify and one could 
express that DNA along with the in vitro transcription translation mix printed on the protein chip surface. So, if you have protein microarrays, features are printed on the chip and then you have generated the contents by using self free expression based system. Now, you want to study the interaction and for that you have to purify a protein and use it as interactor. By using co expression now you can use protein specific antibody to identify the interaction or you can use tag specific antibody to detect interactions. However, in this study authors used co expression it means the query protein along with the array protein were expressed by using self free expression system. So, that there was no need to purify the crude query protein as well. Let us talk about co expression. So, if you have protein microarrays features are printed on the chip and then you have generated the contents by using self free expression system and now you want to study the interaction and for that you need to purify a protein and use it as interactor. You can use protein specific antibody to identify the interaction or you can use tag specific antibody for detecting the interactions. But in this study authors used co expression. Let us talk about co expression experiment. It means the query protein along with the arrayed proteins were expressed by using self free expression system. So, that there was no need to purify the query protein also. When the protein interaction has to be performed you can take the cDNA of phos protein for example, mix it in rabbit reticulocyte lysate along with other in vitro transcription translation machinery. As you can see the slide the mix the whole cell lysate on chip surface and then after incubation when proteins are expressed at the same time query cDNA will also express the proteins and then if it finds the binding partner it is going to bind to those features which can be detected by using protein specific or tag specific antibody. By performing this type of experiment authors allowed co expression it means involvement for both query and target proteins expressed in the same environment and allowed very natural protein interactions to happen. There is good likelihood that they are going to identify the right interactors. So, let me show you the steps involved in this study by showing you the following animation. High density NAPA approach for studying well characterized gene pairs study by Ramachandran et al. 2008. In this study authors made use of high density nucleic acid programmable protein arrays to study protein protein interactions. 647 unique genes were printed onto the array surface and expressed by adding the cell free expression based system. After addition of cell free expression based system proteins containing GST tag were synthesized and bound onto the capture antibody. cDNA of the query protein was also added to the same mixture such that the query was co expressed, but remain unbound due to the lack of a tag capturing agent. These protein microarrays were then probed with antibodies specific to the query proteins. Authors detected various protein interactions using well known query proteins such as June, FOS and MDM2.
we have talked about various applications by employing cell free expression based protein microarrays and discussed biomarker screening, immunological studies and protein protein interactions over the last two lectures. Now, regardless of what applications you want to perform on these arrays, you are going to generate large amount of data. So, the volume of data generated from microarray experiments are prodigious. It becomes important to develop the appropriate informatic system so that one can analyze the data uniformly and make some very good output from this data analysis. So, in the image analysis when you are talking about high density approaches the data analysis the image analysis becomes very challenging. For example, you can see an image here for the protein microarrays and I have shown a spot the expression of this particular immunogenic protein is so high that it is spilled over to the neighboring proteins. Now, one need to correct this type of error and remove the spots which are in the periphery of these proteins. A scaling up is good approach because one wants to perform high throughput experiment so that thousands of features can be studied simultaneously. However, while scaling up especially when you are using cell free expression based approaches one need to be cautious that what need to be the optimum intensity for the arrays. Because if there is a spillover of express protein on the neighboring protein spot that is going to affect the values of the neighboring spots as well. The slide shows how protein is diffused to the neighboring spots and the neighboring spot need to be corrected for data analysis. Similarly, one need to perform the background correction, normalization and use various parameters to perform good microarray data analysis. Let us now discuss with Dr. Sudesh Srivastava the microarray data analysis. What are the challenges involved and in a subsequent lecture we will talk about in much more detail the different steps and detail of data analysis for microarray based system. Uh, what are the major challenges of the microarray data analysis? Uh, also, I would like to get your comments mm -hmm. that uh, what should be the good statistical design mm -hmm. when biologists are starting some experiment for mm -hmm. the microarray because most of the time these are clinical samples and they would like to uh, get some very useful biological information from mm -hmm. this. Statistical is a very important aspect of uh, uh, this biological experiments and I think uh, the statistician get involved from the beginning of the experiments and the, the importance of statistician is uh, as you mentioned about the sample not only just sample size but to also to understand the experiment right. and uh, control the variation in any biological experiment and so it's a very good idea to have a statistician from the beginning of uh, the experiment and where they can uh, contribute uh, not only on the data analysis point of but also to conducting and performing a optimal design experiment way so you can have a uh, as precise and as useful information out of the data or the experiment you are trying to achieve. That's very important uh, but uh, there are many ways of analyzing micro data mm -hmm. and uh, what are the uh, different approaches which are available mm -hmm. and which one would you consider as a good approach? Yes. There are, uh, I say, uh, statistical is it, uh, methods are uh, tools and it depends on your objective. So, when, whenever you are trying to perform experiment, I think uh, one has to be very clear with the objectives and which uh, when you talk to the st uh, statistician, they will let you know what uh, methods are appropriate, your experiment to your uh, hypothesis and in that case, uh, uh, statistician will let you know uh, how you should go and perform the experiment and not only experiment but also to control the biological or technical errors which are involved in when you are performing experiment. So, but the methods as I said there are these uh, uh, new methods are uh, evolving each and every day in this field and it's because uh, biological problems are very complex uh, it's not like you can answer <laughs> by telling one method so right. uh, but uh, of course there are some standard methods being used in other fields and people are trying to use those soon uh, like the same methods in the in a biological point of view uh, or i would like to say 
the, all the methodologies developed in uh, statistics being based on the small sample size. And now in the recent uh, years, so I would say, and nowadays we are dealing with a huge data set, and particularly in biological field. So in that case, uh, we have to come up with uh, new methods or new methodology uh, in statistics which can handle more appropriately and more uh, objective-oriented uh, um, uh, statistic, uh, statistical uh, method. So uh, I am convinced that uh, it's not possible to really uh, list out one best method. Yes. But at least I'll can you provide a uh, few possible solutions? Absolutely. I will totally agree with you on that. And there is no unique method and is not only in biological point of but even in journal as well because statistics should be statistical is always dependent model dependent uh, or the experiment dependent uh, techniques so it only develops uh, type of data or the experiment objective you're trying to achieve uh, Sudesh uh, in the micro field biologists apply that to uh, identify differential expression of genes mm -hmm. and uh, what type of issues you see like in terms of analyzing these data set from mm -hmm. the microarrays mm -hmm. and uh, what are different ways of analyzing that data and uh, any comments on that? I would like to say the statistical method used uh, in identifying differential expression gene analysis it starts from experimental design uh, till the end of the analysis for the uh, till the final conclusion of the analysis. So there are a number of uh, methods available and particularly at design stage because uh, it's a design stage there is a different kind of design like uh, you must have heard about the loop design, reference designs and uh, also the factorial design is depending on your situation you try to uh, perform your experiment and all these uh, uh, experimental design uh, are basically depend on the statistical tool you want to use for your data analysis and like uh, when you are using uh, reference design or you're using loop design so basically you're trying to compare the two treatments or the like the control or sorry yes uh, or the tumor so in that case uh, you use t-test like when you are comparing just two conditions and in case if you are dealing more more than two conditions then you go a little bit analysis of variance kind of analysis and then you uh, use bootstrap method, you use SAMS method, and uh, also there's a, another method called Welsh method. So these are the all methods appropriate in, in your uh, situation when you are dealing with identifying differential expression genes. So there are a lot of uh, options available, but mm -hmm. it always becomes challenging to apply which one is uh, a real good one. Oh, yeah, for, absolutely, uh, absolutely. And that's why we need uh, some good uh, statistical uh, I'm, in the team for I'm glad to hear that word because <laughs> uh, uh, the, uh, most of the times what happen, uh, the, the scientists or basic scientist research, they, they go to the statistician when they're done with their experiment and they go to and they take their data to the statistician and they ask them, oh, could you please analyze the data? And so in that case, uh, I would like to say there's a very famous saying from R.A. Fisher, uh, when you go to the statistician with your data, so only the statistician can do a post-mortem of your data <laughs> and can tell you how the data dies. Very and said. so yeah. I, with that uh, remark, I would like to say, if you're trying to conduct uh, any uh, research uh, hypothesis or trying to perform any research-oriented biological question so I would say go to the statistician from the beginning and they can help you to at least uh, get the optimal way of uh, experiments itself so that the, that way you can do the best analysis or best mathematics tools uh, to appropriate your situation so uh, I would say yes yeah, statistician should be or must be involved from the beginning of the, uh, the experiment. So I must say that this is a take home um, from this interview that uh, it's not at the end but actually from the beginning mm -hmm. when we need to involve uh, a statistician for the large set of analysis if we want to perform some different uh, uh, high throughput experiments yeah. and especially in the genomics and proteomics is very important because we invest a lot of technology in a lot of samples and if our experimental design is not very well mm -hmm. then later on everything will fail. So with that thought, I will conclude this interview and I'd like to thank Dr. Sudesh for being with us and sharing some of his experience on uh, micro data analysis and challenges. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you.
Thus, in today's lecture, we looked at different types of application of self free expression system through various case studies. We also discussed the role of stringent statistics for robust data analysis with a leading expert Dr. Sudesh Srivastava. Once data is obtained from such high throughput experiments, one gets a holistic view of protein regulation and cell functioning. This brings in disciplines like system biology to test biological hypothesis developed from such studies and also understand functional biology at another level. We will look into these aspects in the forthcoming lecture. Thank you.